Hello again, everyone. Melth here. To continue my Baldur's Gate 3 challenge run. Details of which, as usual, are in the YouTube video description. We'll be doing more of Grim Forge today. Maybe getting to Grim himself, we'll see. Watch out for spoilers throughout this run. So, where we last left off, I just cleared out the devils from this room. Before me. Which lay at the end of one path. We found one of the adamantine forge molds over there, hidden on a skeleton. It's pretty sneaky. Most of the other ones are comparatively easy to find. That still leaves a lot of the central section here to explore more of. I think I have praised the excellent 3D design of this area a few times before, and it really, I think, bears repeating. Think about how cool it is in this game that we're looking down in areas we fought through before. That's where some of the, uh, the worker throwing corpses of gnomes overboard were and things like that. You can see how you go through that doorway, climb up some stairs and so forth, and come back up to over hereabouts where the uh, ochre jellies are waiting to fight and things like that. So. Really, I just think this is a fantastic area. One of the best 3D design areas in the entire game. Alright, well, let's get Enhanced Leave and everyone maybe jump over to that middle section there. Or at least have one person jump over to the middle section. Maybe everyone else can stay here. Or, you know what, actually, to be smart about that, let's have just the person who can actually give people the ability to jump do that. That way you don't get stranded. You can operate this thing with the levers that are over there. Another adamantine mold. I think adamantine weapons are generally just absolute trash and never ever worth using your precious adamantine on. Armor is really good for Act 1, but then gets outclassed pretty fast in Act 2, but I mean, at least it's worth something. So never waste your adamantine on weapons as far as I'm concerned. How the devils even got to some of these remote places to fight all the uh, Sharans, I'm not even sure. So there's the dig site where Nier is trapped, although we don't really fully know that at this point. Here's an insane idea. What if I can just jump across here rather than actually moving the platform over? Wow, I can. Okay, I know there's a way back. I'm going to do that. This will get us another waypoint so we can get everyone else teleported over here once we're ready to. Uh, can I do it without taking damage if I jump to there? Yeah, okay. Let's do it and unlock the waypoint to get everyone else over here conveniently later on. But for now, let's get back to the others. And we'll pick up and loot this area once we're done with that. Enhanced Sleep is such a fun spell to navigate this kind of area. I really love this. Okay, I can hop there. Small steps. Let me just jump 500 feet over here. Okay, there are the controls that operate this thing, which again is a pretty cool system, I think. Another adamantine mold over there, and here's one on this body too. Oh, you know, I guess I misremembered. I thought that there was only one that was found on a random skeleton, but there's two. Okay, in any case, you can just see how this works, you know. One raises and lowers, one shifts it back and forth. If you want to attack the Dwerger from here, it's pretty much just like shooting fish in a barrel. Of course, I won't be doing that because I want to have fight be the hard way, but just, it is an option. Alright, well down here we'll eventually get back to where the other ones are. And we can see where, back when Catholic controlled this area, he was plotting to go and massacre the inhabitants of Moonhaven because Shar worshippers are the worst, and they just love killing civilians. Isn't there... there we go, I knew there's a chest around there somewhere. Money I guess we'll take. Wood bark. Okay. Most of the use of alchemy ingredients. In the beginning came morning. So here's another connection back to the dwarven area. I really like how interconnected the area is. It's not just a linear path. Which some areas of the game are, but not you know, not that many. It's a interestingly designed game that with many pathways and many environments. Not throw. Jump. Okay, and there's everyone else back again. So I think I have fully explored this section here. In which case, it's about time to go over to that waypoint and have some more battles and get to the Adamantine Forge itself. You might think that Grim Forge would be where Grim is, but you'd be mistaken. 
So we actually have a fight incoming over here. I don't know why we can't see the guys yet, because they're not really in ambush or anything, as far as I'm aware. But there is a group of enemies waiting over there. I crave blood. I think we might see them to get closer. Anyway, they're a set of animated armors, which, like the ones in the Arcane Tower, you can actually shut down with Susser Blooms, but I'm not going to be doing that. What? Let's just go ahead and, you know, loot everything that's over here first, though. Silav Yali was the genius who helped design this place. Unheard, unseen. Repositioning. You know, considering that Shar wanted to prevent there from being any heat in the universe, and that's why she rebelled against her purpose she was created for and things like that, tried to destroy everything and everyone, I do feel like there's a lot of hypocrisy in her and her followers having this lava you know, field forge here, but whatever. This is an okay item, at least, I guess. Anyone not have a better hat already? You've already used the ability from this one, so I mean, you might as well put that one on, right? You already have that proficiency. This is a genuinely good helmet, just all my guys that could benefit from it basically can't wear the armor at all because they're using mage armor, in the case of the Kastarian and Ballista currently. But... That should be okay for Lazel. Looks terrible. I guess you can't expect much of the way of fashion from people who want to live in darkness. Open up. Okay. Split mold makes split armor. Normally that's just an absolute trash to your armor type that should never be worn, but in this case it basically functions as split armor plus two, and that makes it briefly competitive. And then the force will fall behind and be never useful again. Ooh, an error of many targets. Yes, please. There's a surprising amount of glare off my screen today. I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing properly. Okay, so this is kind of the scientific progress in how they got the forge working, I guess. And that one book, that's too much. Eager for okay, so let us prepare and then take the fight to the enemy over here. There are, as I said, a number of animated armors up top there. They have high ground, you don't really want that. There's also one hidden around the corner who's a little bit hard to deal with as a result of that. So what I think we want to do, we can't really you know, sneak up on them because they're watching the only access point, but they're not watching over here. And jumping is very sneaky in this game. Let's get everyone's familiars ungrouped. And let's have everyone come over here. In stealth mode, please. Okay, so we'll cast long jump and everything, we'll get them jumping over there. We'll have we'll high ground or at least equal ground against them. Uh, I mean, cast long jump, not do a long jump. What could possibly be stealthier than repeatedly shouting Makte Vitute and then jumping a hundred feet over here? Never wanted the easy path. We do need to get closer though, so that could pose a problem. There we go. I knew there'd be a way to do it from outside their sight. Still in shadow. She should have an easy chance. An easy time, that is. Since she's got higher strength. As do you, so that should be easy too. I'm just waiting. And you as well. 
birds. Are you in stealth mode? Yeah, you're in stealth mode. Fly over there. Okay, so here they are. Let us join battle by, uh, maybe I'll sneak attack one of them as a bonus action. Don't burn yourself. I mean, sneak attack in the colloquial sense, that is. Oh, it actually surprised them. Neat. All right, let's get out of stealth mode. I didn't really expect that to work. Well, that's cool. So in that case, I can maybe fly up here and blind some of them. Actually, I forget if that works in animate armors. It works on one of animate armors or Bernard, but arbitrarily not the other one. And I just can't remember which one. Let's find out. Those ones are immune. Very well. But what I think I might want to do, what if I pitch the melee ones down off of this cliff and then take out just the ranged ones? That might be efficient. I guess I can't take it that melee one that way, but that's fine. Karlak, it's go time. What are your odds of hoisting and throwing that guy? You can push him, I'm pretty sure. Very good. I can maybe push you down to low ground. Be pretty good use of bonus action, just give more to hit to Astarian. Yeah, I say I can do that, but it looks like you might be blocked. By there we go, okay. Reverberation applies too, so that's nice. And then you just get out of the way there. That'll be nice. Survival is all that matters. Are you blocked? Okay, you're blocked. We can fix that. We want to get, of course, kills ideally on both Ballista and Astarian so they can just get more actions. We're probably overkilling this fight, it's not really that hard. I didn't even expect to get surprise against them, but yeah, surprise in this game works pretty weirdly. Alright, we'll just shoot that one down. Or not. There we go. So now I should be free to... Fire away that one, softening him up for Ballista. The dance of death. Who should then be able to just apply Hex to the guy. And if we blast him. His odds of death are pretty good. There we go. I want to turn off... Okay, it already is off. Very good. Fun. Can you get to a point where you can throw at that guy, who's otherwise a little bit hard to hit? Path is interrupted from here. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. But what if I step over there? There should be, like, logically a path there, I think. Yeah, path is interrupted still by that thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm not too surprised that throwing is a little bit tricky in this area. There are a lot of actual obstacles in the way. Sometimes I take issue with what it says blocks me, but this time I can mostly agree with this. There we go. My best interest. Huh. As I've said, it's weird what you know, heights give you knockback and what ones don't sometimes. Time to push okay, well, I should be able to pretty easily just apply Hex to that guy and then kill him off. Uh, here comes tip off my cat. Hey there, fluffy boy. You here to watch me massacre these animated armors? Tibalt approves. Let's have some fun. Spill some blood. There we go. Still breathing, despite everything. Looking ahead. 
Okay, I'm playing one-handed now as Tibalt Purrs. These boots have seen everything. Let's see if I can loot everything under these circumstances. I'll grab that scale mail bolt. So scale mail is probably the next best thing to make after split mail. It's medium armor, and it's almost as good when it's adamantine. Much like splint, it's normally a terrible armor type, but it's kind of just is usable under these circumstances where it gets all these bonuses. Something good here. I hope. Once again, we're getting kind of encumbered here. Oh, we should retrieve our hand axe plus one. And then I guess there's more Shar worshippers down below there. Onward. One other interesting feature is down below that you can see a uh, lava elemental stomping around sometimes. And if you want, you can just throw things at him and just demolish it. Yeah, there it is, over there. You can just demolish it with throwing weapons from here, but I feel like that's kind of cheesy, so I won't be doing that. I'll go down there and fight it more conventionally when the time comes. You know, probably have just Lazelle go through this area just so everyone else doesn't have to jump over the lava, which is comparatively easy for her given her high jumping ability. Convection Schmanvection, am I right? Okay. So, I don't know much about mining, but apparently the way it works is you just, like, take a stick or whatever, and you just beat the ground, and then suddenly a chunk of ore comes out as you, you know, have thousands of tons of rock rain down all around you. Ah, there's a treasure chest over there, I think. Where's my shovel? Not the one that I summoned, the other shovel. Is it here? Let's see. There we go. The red of the burst is showing up in a weird location. Haste is, as I said before, in this game, pretty great from a potion, to such an extent that I wouldn't really ever cast it from a scroll. Even like a sorcerer or whatever who can twin it is kind of outcompeted most of the time by potions of speed in this game. In 5e, as I mentioned before, haste is kind of like a noob trap spell. People think that it's really good, but it's usually really, really bad, actually, if you do the math on it. Except under certain circumstances with things like uh, rogues, if you do a certain kind of exploit with it to get an extra sneak attack, basically. But that's a goofy exploit, very class-specific, and still not even that great. Let's see what this does. Centuries of blazing heat have smoothed away the planet. Well... Down here we get to a part of Act 1 that I really don't like very much. See, I remember getting here for the first time and thinking, you know, this looks like kind of a place they might be an ambush in. I was pretty suspicious of it. So I was moving around carefully, had you know, one scout guy go in advance, looked around there and thought, well, I can't see any evidence of an ambush. There was an ambush anyway. But because I was being smart and had just my scout going ahead, no one else was pulled into it. No one else was surprised, just that one guy was. Let me demonstrate kind of how things go here. In fact, it might even be worth doing a backup save just so we can demonstrate the silliness of the surprise mechanics in this game. Okay, I've got my backup. Let me demonstrate the issue here. So let's have maybe um, just these two. One who has uh, alertness, one of whom doesn't. Come on down and get into the action there. Let's have everyone go into stealth mode too. Time for you know, Tibble, I'm worried that you're Purring is giving our position to the concealed enemies here. They might spot us because of you. This ambush will be your fault. Okay. So let's have him now exit south mode so the ambush will trigger. He's instantly surprised, whatever. Now, let's have one of these ravens, maybe, that's gone unseen sneak on in there and do something. So it flies on in, it made its check, whatever. Now it sneaks up on this guy. And it gets surprised even though it was sneaking up on him. So the first time I was doing this, I've had that kind of thing happen to me where I had a scout go in and because my scout got surprised, 
Later on, all my other party members who were separate, watching, waiting, got surprised too. The silliest, dumbest thing that happened was I had a rogue sneak up and do a sneak attack, and then the rogue got surprised after his sneak attack worked and killed an enemy. Just asinine. So, that kind of honor mode ambush can ruin your entire honor mode run. You can do preparation and then still just get surprised and have your team get you know, a party member down or something like that. I think it's worth knowing how to prevent that. So that's why I made this backup, just to demonstrate the technique that always works to prevent it. Let's have Lazelle and only Lazelle go down, because she has alertness. Other people with alert would work too, but you know it's probably safest to have just Lazelle do it for other reasons. She can evac from there easier than some people can. Not one false move. Let's have that raven... Are you in stealth mode? Now you are, okay. With every breath, so, have her and only her walk down there. out of stealth mode so the ambush will trigger. There we go. So, she's the only one in the fight, and because she has alertness, she is not surprised. So now, if someone else joins the fight, who normally would get surprised under the previous system, now they won't be. So let's have maybe a Starian shoot... I don't know, that one. Should be fine. Now he's in the fight, and he's not surprised. So that's the technique. Have only people with alertness in the position when the ambush gets triggered, and then everyone else can join safely after that. But if anyone in your party got surprised originally, everyone who joins later on will get surprised, unless they have alertness to protect themselves personally. That guy in the back is probably going to be hard to hit. Let's see if maybe a Ray of Frost can take it out in one shot or something. Open up. There we go. I don't like there's a second wave of magma methods either, making it even harder to know what you're up against. I guess that's probably making the initial surprise round less deadly, so it's probably meant to be helpful, but it's still pretty painful. Well, let's get Ballissa in on the action here, I think. Maybe I'll hex that guy. Or, you know, hmm, who can I Eldritch Blast? Because Eldritch Blast has a pretty long range compared to hand crossbows. Okay, I can Eldritch Blast the guy, but I can't hex him. On average, an Eldritch Blast will just kill one of those guys, but it's a little bit... It's not guaranteed. I'll try it. There we go. Okay. Give me my extra action. Now I've got the uh, lightning damage that I'll apply to, so I might be able to get away with this now. Not needing Hex for it. And now I've got even more lightning damage if I do an attack here. I think I can maybe bomb those three to death with a single smoke powder bomb that will probably instant kill. I will ascend. I don't know if I need to use a smoke powder bomb for this, but it's a good chance, because they do have an annoying um, way to make you drop your weapons and whatnot. Let's just see if we can take enough of them out without that. Alright, let's say I shoot you. Alright, you're down. Let's see another action. And you're down. And you're probably down. Okay. And we'll see if that hits. Okay. And you've already used your actions. Oh, you still have a bonus action, so that's nice. Okay, I don't think I'll need my um, bomb in that case. I can just blow these guys up with offhand attacks. Like the mud methods, by the way, they blow up if you're near them. And they also have, as I've kind of alluded to, a uh, heat weapon to make you drop your weapons. So watch out for that. But yeah, if you know how to avoid their ambush like that, they're not so tough. It's only really nasty as an ambush. And I just want to talk about how to prevent ambushes like that from ruining your honor mode run. Well, let's maybe again have just Lazel do the looting over here. Their fiery heart things are not really that valuable as I recollect. They make that way look much that I mentioned. It's very, very situational at best. If there's groups of enemies, then it can actually be pretty good, but under normal circumstances, not so much. I don't know if I can safely loot those guys. They might not be like a lava-free... Yeah, that looks lava-free. I mean, not realistically, but in Baldur's Gate terms, it looks lava-free. As I said before, convection is from invection. Let's have a look. 
books luckily, luckily not damaged by the heat. Ah, good to have a scroll of stinking cloud. That, as I mentioned, is usually a kind of a mediocre control spell, but my team has a lot of ways to lower people's constitution saving throws, so I have ways to make them more vulnerable to that than to will saving throws, perhaps. Yeah, I think we still never really do find out what happened to the original builders here. Unless I missed something about that. Fain Death is a horrible spell. Great Invisibility has its uses. I'm too low level to cast it yet, but I'll save it for when I can cast it. And let's do some more mining. That was a strange direction to grab that from for a person who constantly says an efficient path may tell her how to move. Okay. Well, let us go and deal with the magma elemental next, I think. And a little side quest over there, and then we'll save Grim, I think, for next time. That should be a pretty epic battle, and it's worth giving its own episode to if need be. Alright. What now? Need to find a way forward. This must be the forge. What a sight to behold. Certainly does feel pretty epic. Let's make sure no one's getting left behind. Okay. Great. erupting. Better watch my step. So you can avoid fighting the Magma Elemental entirely, but, you know, of course I fight everything all the time for the challenge. Mm. Better move along out of here with people that are in the exploding range. That bird in particular must have a death wish. Where's the elemental? Is that it? I can't tell if you're in stealth or not. Looks like you just exited stealth there. Okay, well that's fine. Let's just have you stand there. The important thing is just get people away from the explodey zone. Tread lightly. Light on my feet. Assume nothing. Oh, I could go for a good meal. And that means you, invisible person. Lava does not respect your invisibility. Is that thing accessible from here, or is it still too far away? Disadvantage. Okay, well let's jump you closer then. And we'll get to a position where we can fight it properly. Let's take a look at our next enemy's stats here. So, it makes the lava explode, which is dangerous of course. It regenerates well in magma, although I think that if you hit it with cold damage it loses that ability. Not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure. It's vulnerable to cold damage, but I mean, there's not that much cold damage available, so. Yeah. A lava elemental. So Yord has this place all stuck. I just said that, Astorian. Pay attention. Are you in stealth mode or not? Are you in stealth mode or not? It's weird to me how they stand up straight for a bit, but are still in stealth after jumping. Okay. Eager for battle. Oh, 
tip up once again approves. He was ejected from my lap after he got too demanding of cuddles and started pulling my other arm down with his claws to demand that I give him belly rubs. But he's back again. Seems like he'll be on his best behavior now. Such a good kitty. Well, perhaps what I'll do is end her turns now, see where the elemental goes, and then try to start a fight with it next turn. Well, well. Okay, from over there, it should be able to see me, right? I would hope so. I'm pretty dumb if it couldn't. Okay. Get everyone out of stealth and we get them in. Oh, it got surprised even. How nice. It's still for generation. I don't think I want to fly the birds over there and peck at it, so I will not take that option. I might like it if it was on traversable ground, so I could loot it afterward, but you know, we'll see about that. Catch my breath. Let us. Hexit. So do I want to push it back? If I do that, that'll be closer to that land that I think will be traversable once the thing is dead. So that's probably worth doing. Oh, come on. There's got to be a path to its face or something over there. There we go. Oh, whatever. Let me get the birds in on the fight, too. I'm not trying to have them get in the benefit of stealth here. I'm just not getting them pulled in aggressively enough, seemingly. Okay. Yeah, and that means you too, random bird over there. Come on. And you at least get out of the lava. Oh, that was clumsy of me. Oops. Well, if I'm going to use any height advantage against it, I probably want it to be early on before it has low hit points, so let's do that now. The returning pike might work. It might have enough fall damage from here to... Let's see. Returning pike? Yes. Okay. Throw that weapon. What? I'm not trying to throw the elemental. We're trying to throw the pike. There it is. Anyway, I just want to do the fall damage now, if it's going to happen, so I don't get the kill with fall damage, which would then make me, you know, lose out on XP, potentially. Can you feel Anyway, I think you can see here the surprise round is totally unnecessary because it can't possibly beat me in initiative so this would have happened anyway and it's going to just die before its first turn comes up anyway. So, nothing really matters than just blitzing it with damage super fast. Action. Okay. We are getting so close to next level. I think Grim will actually get us there because he's worth 800 something XP. A rare boss that actually is worth something in this game. That will be cool. Okay. Well, let's get this little quest done here and then wrap things up, I think. You can provide guidance, why not? Oh, I have this uh, mod on from uh, my multiplayer game that I was playing. Huh. Better remember to turn that off. In any case, it didn't affect things here at all. The mod just adds some spells from uh, 5e. So here is a cursed amulet for us. Thou hast come. <laughs> and it starts a quest that'll span three acts. And the reward for it, if you go all the way through to the end and suffer all the penalties, is that you can cast Tasha's Hideous laughter. That's right, a level one spell. To laugh. Ha, can thou endure? Okay, so this is a pretty easy check with all the bonuses that we've got. I do find it oddly appropriate that a forbidden knowledge of all the horrifying necromancy helps us resist this temptation to laugh. The laugh urge fades 
A quiet power spreads from hand to head and down to your feet. Thou hast done well. For what is a laugh if not one step toward madness? <laughs> Return me, take me home, and thou shalt glow with blessing. You have to take on his curse even to get that terrible perk of Tasha's hideous laughter. To thy granddaughter, Shira Clawen, serves Ilmata, she does. She waits in Worms Crossing. Take me there, and thou shalt bathe in her golden gifts. Oh! I wonder if everyone else could hear this or if this is all just going on in Ballista's head. I do really like how we're all just really sweaty here in this magma filled area. They put in some work to make that happen, I guess. A ghost! <laughs> I am sunlight on water, dew on grass. Sharon's broke my body. Again, Sharon's are behind everything. They tortured this guy and then enslaved his spirit and then caused this disturbance by accident. No, it's not. That's not written at all. Fwatwa. Beneath the rampant joy, you sense the monk's fear and sincerity. He doesn't wish to harm you, but that doesn't mean he won't. Right. I shall walk with thee. I shall grant you my power. <laughs> okay, well, let's stow the amulet and we'll get to someone later on. It lets you cast the Shatter Spell, which is actually decent. Once per short rest. So, you know, I appreciate that in this no rest run, basically. Well, in any case, we found out now the follow-up to that book we read from a Sharon a long time ago. Let's have just Lazelle go and fetch some things around her. Does she need Featherfall to get to that, or is she okay? She's okay, apparently. Maragon Halvers aren't too special. I think we already found one before. Now, I think I pushed the lava under close enough to that ledge that I can loot it safely. Let's check that interpretation. Let's make sure to move in just the way we want to. There we go. So it just has some gems on it, nothing too important. I should unequip the returning pike from her, come to think of it, and give her uh, Melf's first staff back, is what I usually give her. I'll need to think about that for the upcoming Grim fight. Intestines throb. Alright, let's get everyone grouped back up again and get over to where we'll go down to Grimm next time. Thank you for watching, everyone. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Macy3131, Frank Maidens, Master Knight DH, Jackie and Lino, George Grin, Travis, Carlo Andrea 97 Cthulhu's Mom, Andrew Curzon, Troobsy, Skill Rap, Gregory, William Wakefield, Danny Hall, Jeffrey Borst, Just Becca, Jack, Mishas01, Jacob Marshall, Nubiana, Till Fisher, Latenex, Discord Colossus, Nicholas Schmuck, Kostya Nisarevich, Luke, Frederick Brun, Goman Blackrock, Dodo King 4, Marson Bialik, Maveth, Techno Waffle, Nebular, I Loop, Michael Francis, Emperor Kong 420, Robert Mackey, Micken Balls, Daniel Sedagicado, Stilgen Flamey, Micah Murray, Christopher Allen, Stefan Von Zill, Eddie. Kaimu, Wendy, Ali Kasamoglu, Lucas Riverola, Skylar Sauce, Nick Myers, Gibbo Jibbo, Bethany James, and Emp Ninjas. Have a great day, everyone.